It's your turn. If we don't escape, I'll be punished. I've been bad. Just keep watch. Okay? What if we're caught? You see? One down. That just leaves yours and the one on the door. I'll be punished. I've been bad. I'll be punished. It's okay. Be quiet. <gasps> Just a second. Alice, I thought you were on the day shift. Pi? Well, I just slipped out for a second. This arrived for you at the station. Thanks. I'll put it in the back room, then I'll get you a slice of pie. Deal? I'm kind of in a hurry. What kind? Blueberry. 
It's a deal. It's not much, but I earned it. God damn it, Ness! You gotta be the slowest waiter in Santa Esperanza! Yell at me one more time, and instead of a hamburger, you'll be ordering soup. <laughs> anyway, they catch the deadbeat robbing the pharmacy, but... The there's no proof, so they hand him over to me. Elliot, seriously, I don't have much time. Take your time. If Jenkins says anything, tell him it's my fault. And let him know that I'll continue to keep his agents waiting until he settles his tab. <laughs> I don't think I dare. Mm. But this is worth getting in trouble for. To think, I didn't find my true calling until I was in my 50s. And this time, go easy on the chili sauce. <gasps> Gives me indigestion. Done. Okay, I tell him, if you confess right now, I finish work on time, and everybody's happy. If you don't, I have to work late. <laughs> I get mad, and I have to rearrange your face. You really said that? There you go. And listen to this, Ness. <laughs> and then I say to him, <laughs> the doctor will have to work late too, and it'll be your fault. He'll be mad. And when he's done fixing your mug, it'll be so ugly, you'll never get laid again. <laughs> he's saying, right? Yeah, like a soprano. <laughs> and you know what I did next, Ness? You rearranged his face. Exactly. You see, criminals are like dogs. <gasps> By the time they get punished, they forget what they did wrong. Bye. A bust-up face is forever. Ah, hot damn! This burger is worth coming here for! Glad to hear it, Dickinson. Wish I could say the same of all my customers. Ah, screw you, Ness. Your first time here, right? I like this job, you know? Not because I like serving coffee or food. This job is about understanding people, knowing what they want, what they need. You just have to keep your eyes open. The clothes, the haircut, a little movement, a hand clutching a knife. Don't even think about it. Not because of me. At most, I'd knock out a couple of your teeth before disarming you. The guys you should be worried about are the cops at the other table. They'd keep kicking you in the ribs long after you passed out. You'd be lucky to wake up in a hospital. The question is, what do I do with you now? Buy yourself a suit, son. Get a shave, get a job, and make a man of yourself. And if you come back here looking for trouble, you'll find it. You want coffee? Mm -mm. You still dating the same kid, the blues guitar fella? Hey, hey, I'm a big girl. I don't need the fatherly concern. Or would you prefer me to date a cop? You know I love the blues, don't you? Your dad would be proud of you. Thanks. But not Jenkins. Easy there, miss. Slow and steady wins the race.
Hmm. If I don't get some blackberry pie this minute, I'm gonna die before this day is out. Can you help me, sir? I'm afraid not. It's too bad. I need something sweet for my last day on Earth. Blueberry pie? Last slice. Hmm. You use almond extract? Quarter of a teaspoon. Which brand? I make my own. Do I know you from someplace? Me? No. But you do know my boss. Garrison, O'Reilly, DiPietro, Dockers. Garrison, O'Reilly, DiPietro, Dockers. Garrison, O'Reilly, DiPietro, Dockers. Garrison, O'Reilly, DiPietro, Dockers. You, call your boss. I have business to settle with him. <sighs> Can't even enjoy a quiet smoke. Look, I get it. It's Christmas. You're lonely and you want to end it all. But Santa Esperanza is full of bridges. Why not throw yourself off one of them and leave me in peace? Tell Capone that Elliot Ness is here. We're going to finish this thing once and for all. Jeez, I don't get paid enough. Listen. You got it backwards. I'm not here to make my boss come out. I'm here to stop you getting in. I hope you asked Santa Claus for crutches. Because if you don't do what I say, they're going to be the perfect gift for you. Maybe I could borrow a pair from your buddy, Dockers. I hear he's never gonna need him again. You shouldn't have brought that up. Oh no? You gonna cry now? Hey, come on. It's Christmas. At the front gate! It's Ness! Put down your weapons. You'll get a fair trial.
words you come into my house you destroyed my family you kill my men I didn't know human beings mattered to you would you kill an unarmed man you Elliot Ness that Elliot Ness is dead you killed him yourself Papa Vittorio! Are you gonna kill me in front of my son? That stain right there is all that's left of Denunzio. One of my best men. I told him to take care of the butcher on East Main. One of the jerks who've been screwing with me for months. We had to make an example of him. Send a message to the other storekeepers. Danunzio ripped out his guts and hung him up with the merchandise, but he did it while the butcher's daughter was watching. Fucking Danunzio. There are lines that cannot be crossed. We have to protect the innocence of children, keep them far, far away from certain experiences. Tell him to go. Vittorio stays. He's my son, not a storekeeper's child. If his father dies, at least let him know who to take his revenge on. But that's not gonna happen. Look, Vittorio. <laughs> his hand's shaking. Booze turns men into cowards. You'll be like your father. Never drink. It's funny, huh? The White Knight of the Volstead Act gets licked up to kill the King of Bootleg Booze. Relax, son. Nobody's going to kill anybody. I'd love to introduce you to a girl your age, Vittorio. Her name is Claire Dockers, and she sings like an angel. You two would get along. Two days ago, Claire's father caught up with yours in a warehouse. Your father was hitting innocent people, and that's not right. He told him to stop, but your father ignored him and pulled out a gun to shoot him. Claire's father was quicker. He drew his gun first and fired, but the bullet jammed. Your father killed Claire's father, in cold blood. He kicked him in the face so many times not even Claire herself would have recognized him. You'll never prove I killed Dacus. I know. And that's why I'm here. But now I know I'm better than you. Your father is a murderer, and Claire hasn't stopped crying these last two days all because of him. Never forget that, Vittorio. Hold it! Let him go. Run, Ness, and forget I exist! Or I'll have to report what you just did. And I do have witnesses. You hear me, nurse? Some first class pie. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. My car is parked outside. If you could join me as soon as possible, I'll be doubly grateful. Gentlemen, I'm closing up. Time to move along. So early? What are you talking about, Ness? Are you serious? My nephew's sick and my sister needs me. I'm sorry. Ah, what a pussy. Nurse Ness to the rescue. <laughs> That's a laugh. <laughs> and 
that's how a bullet turns into a boomerang. At last, Mr. Ness. Please get in. I could swear I've seen your face before. Sure. I'm the guy you served a slice of blueberry pie to five minutes ago. Thanks for remembering me. Please get in. I can't afford for you to catch a cold. We'll be going up in a couple of minutes. I'll wait for you in the cable car. Up where? The Hindenburg. Her forced landing in New Jersey almost cost the lives of over 100 passengers. Hmm, yeah. Nearly a fireball in midair. It would have burned down half the city. Okay, let's go.
Scared of heights? Since I was a kid, I like to keep my feet on the ground. <laughs> that makes two of us. If you need a paper bag, I have one. How high does this thing go? Higher than the clouds. I'm afraid I can't come with you. Thanks for the pie. But... Welcome to the Grand Hindenburg Hotel. My name is Susan, and I'm glad to be of service. Your name, please? I'm Mr. Untouchable. In that case, I suggest you try not to live up to your name if you want to make the most of your stay at the Hindenburg, Mr. Untouchable. And now, how can I help you? I'm here to see Mr. Capone. There's no Mr. Capone here, Mr. Untouchable. Listen, Susan. I know more than 60 aliases for Al Capone, so you have two options. One is to delay my appointment with him until I guess the right one, which he is not going to like. The other is to send me through and earn my eternal gratitude and his. Your call. <sighs> He's... He's in the presidential suite. Top floor at the end of the red carpet. Thank you, Susan. Have a pleasant stay at the Grand Hindenburg Hotel, Mr. Untouchable. Your attention, please. The cable car to Santa Esperanza leaves kind of in three minutes. Shit. You think it's going to be a quiet day and suddenly the storm hits you? You can't go in there, sir. They're in rehearsal. Theater? Shakespeare's Titus Andronicus. They open in a couple of nights. Perhaps Mr. Capone can get you a ticket? Capone? He's at this hotel? Gosh, I'd heard the opposite. Your attention, please. The cable car to Santa Esperanza leaves in two minutes.
Come on! What happened here? Nothing to worry about, my good man. What happens on the Hindenburg stays on the Hindenburg. You never had problems with the police? Oh, many a one, my good man. In fact, what I'm cleaning up is today's first problem. Are you saying the law doesn't apply here? We're too high up, my good man. The law has always preferred to look down. How can you work in a place like this? <laughs> you don't want to know where I worked before this, my good man. Sorry.
If it wasn't for my habit of checking all possible exits when I walk into the lion's den, I'd be a dead man. You should be rotting in jail. That's exactly what I've been doing for the last 19 and a half years. You'll be surprised what a little good behavior can do for a person. Yeah, not gonna ask me for my last words this time. I'm a lot closer to death than when I last saw you. As are you. Why did you ask me here? Why did you come? I wanted to see if you'd improved with age. I'm glad to see the answer's no. When you said rot in jail, you really meant it, huh? Look, uh, I didn't ask you here to find out who's got the snappiest comebacks. I want to hire you. What? I require your services as a detective. You're so old, I don't know if you're senile or if you're joking. Look, Ness. My granddaughter Sophia has been kidnapped. When what happened to my son, Vittorio, I, uh, I put her in a boarding school. She was entered under a false surname, Colombo. Nobody knows who she is. Nobody? Eh, only Milton, the man who brought you here. I trust him completely. Two days ago, a guy turned up at the boarding school. He introduced himself as Guido Colombo the girl's uncle, and her new legal guardian. He said her parents had just died in a tragic automobile accident. He produced all the relevant papers, driver's license, the custody document supposedly made out by the father, the death certificates. He uh, explained away the fact that the girl didn't know him by saying he moved to Seattle before she was born. Any clues? Nah. Well, Sophia was wearing a blue dress with flowers that I personally ordered for her from Italy. She was also wearing white ballet shoes with daisies embroidered on them. As for the guy, the school principal said he was tall and slim, uh, in his 50s. No particular accent. Black hair, no beard, no glasses. Well dressed. Could be anyone. But I know he was hired by one of my old associates. Someone wants to finish me once and for all. Maybe they want control of what's left of my organization. Maybe they hate my guts. And I thought I was the only one who still hated you after 20 years. What else have you got? I got this. And I got you. You don't have me. My place is at my diner. And your girl's not there. Huh. So where should I be looking? You were the biggest boss in the Mafia, and by the looks of this place, you didn't lose everything. Why don't you ask one of your subordinates for help? You don't listen, do you? The kidnapper was hired by one of my men. One of the people I trust. So why me? Twenty years ago, I pushed you to the edge. I bought your friends and killed the ones who couldn't be bought. I got you so obsessed with me that your wife ended up leaving you. When you had nothing left, you walked into my house, shot my bodyguards, and pointed a gun at me. You could have killed me. But you chose to take it out on this piano. You're the only honest man I know. I'm not going to help you. I'm not asking you to help me. I'm asking you to rescue a little girl. Forget that her surname is Capone. Her name is Sophia. She's eight years old and smart as a whip. Okay, okay, you win. I'll help. Not for you, for her. But I want something in return. As you can see, I'm not short of money. Ask, I won't haggle. fortune to the Santa Esperanza hospice. That won't be difficult. 
I've been donating to them for decades. And I don't need the money anymore. I don't give a damn what happens to me, Ness. You just save Sophia. And you can start by investigating Carlo Carl Baccarini. How did you know? Biggest forger in Santa Esperanza. Wouldn't surprise me if Sophia's so-called uncle's papers were made by him. Besides, he's been cursing your name ever since we put you in jail. Hey, I treated him like a son. After you killed his parents. They were selling booze without my permission. Wait, you know where to find him? I have a good contact at the station. A girl. Rookie. Straight arrow. Reliable. A girl? You were saying you trust her? You are such a chauvinist. Do you trust me? Deal? Deal. Oh, gee, son of a bitch. Keep Milton informed at all times, huh? You hear me? I know you from somewhere. Yeah, you're not gonna ask me for my last words. You should be running. I'm never going to help you. Why me? I'm not asking you to help me. I'm not a ghost anymore. I'll do it. Not for you. For her. This town has become a jungle. Where not even the rats are safe. Those who swore to protect us fight to steal the last scraps of dignity we have left. And those who should judge them prefer to squabble over their prey. gonna need help. I knew you would, Alice. Write this down. 31 Wicker Avenue, in Lakeview. Thanks. Nice work. Elliot, what do you want with him? He's got a hell of a file. Right now, it's better you don't know, Alice. What? Are you protecting me? I promised your father that I would. I'm a cop, not a little girl. 
Alice, I don't have much time. I'll let you know how it goes. Thanks. <sighs> Tomorrow's going to be a long, long day. Thirty-one Wicker Avenue. This is it. You sure? I'm sure. At last. That stench of stale grease about you reminds me too much of my old job. I smell of grease? Eh, I don't think anyone else would notice. But when you spend a part of your sentence as a chef in the kitchens on Gore Island, you smell it a mile away. And how do you think I met Alphonse? Playing golf? Alphonse. On the subject of cooking, I know your blueberry pie had an extra something. I still don't know what. Alphonse. So what now? You got a plan? Take a look around, in case there's a rear exit. I'll take the main door. My pleasure. The fact that a criminal like him can hang up his shingle in broad daylight says a lot about Santa Esperanza. Someone took out sections of the fence. Odd. Interesting taste. Been centuries since a gardener visited this house. Maybe Baccarini's business isn't going too well. Baccarini doesn't get many visitors. Baccarini? Carlo Baccarini? Nothing of interest out back. Sorry. You better come see this, Mr. Ness. What is it? I don't know how to describe it. Is that our man? Baccarini. My God. We have to find out who did this, and why. Let's go. You're the detective, Mr. Ness. Besides, Alfonso want to see this. I'll be right back. All right. I have to establish how Baccarini died. Maybe the body parts can shed some light on the motive. What the hell are we up against? His eyes were pulled clean out of their sockets. Whoever did this, it wasn't their first time. And if they committed any other murders like this, it's likely that the police found some of the bodies. I must remember to ask Alice. His teeth were all pulled out before he was killed. The buildup of blood inside his mouth speaks for itself. Pity he won't last till Christmas, because he'd almost pass for a tree. There's no doubt the murderer took his time. This isn't a cut, it's a tear. His hands were ripped off. Who has that kind of strength? Once he got stuck in there, Looks like the bottom 
of a glass. It's Baccarini, no doubt about that. Although the one I remember was more together. Takes a strong man to tear that out. Or several. The blood comes from the other side of the corridor and ends next to the body. He was attacked in the other room and dragged to the hall. Hmm. The evidence suggests that the events began in the lounge. How did Baccarini encounter his murderer? The table must have been really heavy, or maybe it was thrown extremely hard. A perfectly circular dent, as if someone had tried to hammer in a gigantic bolt, around four inches in diameter. scratched the wood. Blood ran like water. Did it break during the struggle, or was it already broken? What kind of person takes off a wristwatch without unfastening it? Or fastens the strap again after taking it off. Blood. Blood everywhere. This was opened recently. Glass on the floor indicates the window was broken from outside. There's something under there. How'd it wind up under there? Not one round fired. It must have happened fast. and olives. They lap those things up like caviar. Like a true bachelor, he should have put these into soak. Hours of scraping to get them clean. Although at this stage I don't think Baccarini's too worried about that. Four glasses. Two of water, two of wine. I've always been a whiskey man, but I know a good wine when I see one. Leftover lasagna, and it looks good. Why is it that two out of three Italian gangsters are great cooks? I'll never understand what the deal is with them and cooking. The plates and the glasses leave no room for doubt. Baccarini had company for dinner. One knife's missing, the biggest one. Hmm, shut from the inside.
smells of whiskey. Jammed shut from the inside. Maybe between the two of us when Milton gets back. If I'm not mistaken, this door opens onto the same room as the locked door in the kitchen. Blood and some kind of sticky liquid. This car looks too classy for a forger like Baccarini. Are there sufficient reasons to believe that when the murderer attacked Baccarini, there was someone else in the house? The first possibility to be ruled out is that the car belonged to Baccarini. Vermont plates. Someone drove a long way. Let's take a look in the glove compartment. Bingo! A man's cigarette case. OB, one of the Baccarini clan? I should have stayed in my diner. I know why his teeth were pulled out, more or less. What is that? Looks like a ritual. What was Baccarini mixed up in? The initials OB on a cigarette case. A car with Vermont plates. One, it has Vermont plates. Two, it's too luxurious for a criminal of his standing. Three, the initials on the cigarette case don't match his name. The next possibility that needs to be ruled out is that the car was stolen. There should be evidence that there was someone else in the house. Dirty plates, glasses, and silverware from a dinner for two. The dirty dishes and glasses prove that Baccarini ate lasagna with one other person. Was Baccarini's guest still in the house when the murderer showed up? A broken whiskey glass found in the dining room. What looks like the bottom of a broken glass buried in Baccarini's back. It seems clear that Baccarini and his guest were drinking when the murderer took them by surprise. The real question is, what happened to the witness? 
Did they escape? Did the murderer take them? Or are they still in the house? A door in the kitchen, locked from the inside. It opens onto the same room as the jammed door in the corridor. A door in the corridor jammed shut. It opens onto the same room as the locked door. One locked door could be a coincidence, but two locked doors which open onto the same room can't be. Either I'm completely wrong, or the witness is in that room. But I need Milton to open one of those doors. Pieces of glass from the window in the hall, found inside the house. An open bottle of whiskey. A pistol, fully loaded. I'd say Baccarini was drinking in the dining room when his assailant burst in through the window. Baccarini pulled his gun, but the murderer disarmed him before he could shoot. Where did the torture begin? A broken table, scratched and covered in blood. Two pools of blood, one on either side of the dining room table. A broken table, scratched and covered in blood. A blood-stained wristwatch, with the glass broken and the strap fastened. The bloodstains show that the murderer began to torture Baccarini on the dining table itself. That was where his hands were torn off. As a result, his wristwatch fell to the ground. How did the body reach its current position? The trail of blood from the dining room to the hall. Baccarini's teeth were all pulled out. The lamp, torn off its brackets and blocking the stairs. Baccarini, already minus hands, was dragged into the hall, where the murderer used the brackets of the lamp to complete his macabre diorama. Baccarini's teeth were all pulled out. The murderer tore Baccarini's hands off. Hands ripped off, teeth torn out. I guess I'll have to rule out criminal intent or a personal angle. Baccarini's eyes still haven't shown up. What if I look for whatever was used to remove them? A teaspoon stained with blood and some kind of sticky liquid. The mixture of sticky liquid and blood can only mean one thing. The spoon was used to remove Baccarini's eyes. The mutilations and the disappearance of his eyes suggest two possible motives. Psychopathy or cultist fanaticism? Which is it? Some kind of symbol drawn in blood. A sick altar of human flesh. Although I don't know the origin of the symbol in the bathroom and the altar of flesh and teeth, I'd say the motive was some kind of occult religion. The big question is, who did it? Mr. Ness, can you open the door for me? It was open. Why did you ring? I thought I should use the doorbell so I wouldn't startle you. When I came in, I pressed the doorbell and it didn't work. Well, in light of the facts, I deduced that it was your finger that wasn't working. So... What can you tell me to restore my faith in you as a detective? What is that? Not a good start. It's a camera, so Alphonse can see all this. All right. Follow me. Baccarini had company for dinner. Someone from Vermont with the initials OB. Someone whose social status was a lot higher, but who was on the same side of the law. He served lasagna, and after clearing away the dishes, they opened a bottle of whiskey in the dining room. 
That was when the murderer burst in on them, coming through the window which he broke with his own body weight. Baccarini, or maybe his guest, pulled a gun, but it was a waste of time. The murderer was so fast he was disarmed before he could fire. He focused his attention on Baccarini, totally ignoring the guest, and lifted him up into the air. He then threw him against the dining room table so hard that one of the glasses of whiskey was embedded in Baccarini's back. He span around, clawing at the table, and immediately afterwards the murderer ripped off his hands. I have no idea how he did it, but all the evidence suggests he just pulled. Blood sprayed everywhere. The wristwatch fell to the ground. He dragged him through the corridor into the hall. He tore down the lamp, hung him from the brackets, and stabbed steel rods through his body. He skewered him on the iron bars, possibly taken from the fence outside, and pulled out his teeth one by one. Finally, he scooped out his eyes with a teaspoon. Baccarini must have been dead when the murderer went to the bathroom with his hands and his teeth. There, he arranged them to make an altar, weaving the fingers together and placing the teeth inside. Next, he painted something on the wall in blood, a symbol which I don't recognize, but which could have some kind of ritualistic significance. When he'd finished his artwork, he left. I don't know what he did with the eyes. You're telling me that someone did all this on with a teaspoon? More or less. And you worked all this out on your own some, just by looking? More or less. I don't know which of the two of you scares me more. Wait a second. What about the guest? Right. Come with me. Nothing. Turns out Mr. Untouchable isn't infallible. But you were close. Congratulations. This must be Baccarini's office. Let's take a quick look around. All yours. Jesus, there's at least a million dollars here. Mm-hmm. Baccarini's? I'd be surprised. Probably his guests, and I doubt it was to pay Baccarini for his services. None of his forgeries are worth that much. Carlo. I have the goods for OB, but I have to take the children to school tomorrow and I can't make the meetup. Friday, same time, same place. It's signed N.I. Mm-hmm. These initials are getting to be a pain in the ass, right? I have to take the kids to school tomorrow. I don't think this is some loving divorced daddy, Milton. Ah, I take back what I just said. The driver's license of one John Martinson and Osmond Burke. O.B. Hmm. Do we know him? The eldest son of the richest family in Vermont, convicted rapist. He was arrested thanks to the testimony of his father who wound up disinheriting him. He escaped from prison last week. He broke into the family home and slit the throats of all his relatives one by one, opened the safe and got away with a fortune. Uh, they don't make jails like they used to. All starting to add up, isn't it? Ah! Out of my way! Out! Out! Ah! Out! Ah! 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 Milton! Ah! Milton! You're doing fine on your own, Mr. Ah! Ness. I believe in you.
Baccarini? What was he like? Describe him for me. He was a monster. Red and black. I mean, his head reached the ceiling. He tore off his hands with his claws. It was a monster. A monster! Should I hit him again? You're Osmond Burke, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. Good. Now pay attention, Burke, because I have a question for you. Who is John Martinson? I... I, I am. I am. Ah, uh, Baccarini created a new identity for you. And I'll bet that under those bandages there's a new face, fresh from surgery. <laughs> Who wrote this note? Uh, Nikolai Ivankov. Rings a bell. One of Capone's right-hand men 20 years ago. What does this stuff about kids mean? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Calm down, Burke. You were going to meet up with him, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, at the docks. Uh, uh, birth 42. Right, right next to where um, where, where the uh, Allig Alligator 3 is moored. So what's the meet-up time? Uh, t tomorrow. Tomorrow at, uh, uh, tomorrow. 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 Tomorrow noon. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow? No, it's going to be tonight. Don't get too comfortable. We'll be there in no time. You need painkillers. I hate the fact that I'm taking an interest in your health, but it's the law. I'm afraid not, Mr. Ness. I have to take him to Alphonse. Out of the question. I know his temper. He'll beat him to a pulp. Listen, if the missing girl was your granddaughter, you wouldn't forgive me if I didn't let you see the only suspect who could lead us to her. Okay. Ah, shucks. What? I thought that bloodbath would cover up the smell of stale grease. I was wrong. Elliot? Ah, oh, Delphine. Oh, thank God you're here. The lights were off, so I thought that... Uh, I'm sorry. I got out of the hospital late, then I went to the station to pick up Jim's check, and when they told me... I... I'm scared. Of what? What are you drinking? It's only juice. Juice and nothing else. Breathe on me. Hmm. You heard me. <sighs> I'm sorry. It, it hasn't been a good day. What's happened? No! You knew! Knew about what? What's that gun doing there? A guy I know is having trouble with a two-bit mafioso. He asked me to go with him, just in case. I didn't have to get it out. Well, don't. Don't start taking on the Mafia. Not now. You really don't know? No, I don't know. And if you keep up the guessing games, I'll never know. He's back. Who? Him. I don't know why it still surprises me, but it's incredible that you were such a good detective, and yet you've never been able to understand people. Capone got out of jail. Where do you hear that? Chief Jenkins. Chief Jenkins? The same guy who said he was going to clean up Santa Esperanza, right? In that case, you can rest assured Capone just put on his striped pajamas and in four minutes time he'll be snoring in his cell. Elliot, what if it's true? If he's out, what's the first thing he's going to do? Who does he hate more than anyone? 
Let him come. He'll find the fastest waiter in Santa Esperanza. Before he can pull his gun, I'll have him dead drunk. Please, Elliot, don't joke. You're the only part of Jim's life that I have left. If you put yourself in danger, I... I'm fine. Thanks. My hand? One of my customers. He's a boxer and we got to throwing some punches. For old time's sake. What's going on, Elliot? We're closed. Can you wait outside for a couple of minutes, Milton? Sure, of course. Uh, although, I'm sorry to say, but we're short on time. Elliot. Um... I said a couple of minutes, Milton. It's all right. Goodbye, Elliot. You can use that couple of minutes to teach this gentleman some manners. No, and it's none of your business. Sorry to butt in. I've brought your rapist costume for the party. Seriously, you're not... No, she's the wife of a friend who died in the line of duty, Jim Dockers. Mm. Alphonse told me about him. Your Alphonse killed him. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Ness. Although he's not the same man he was. Anyway, isn't the deal with marriage until death do us part? It's not that simple. There are other factors. Delphine and I have been friends a long time, and I don't have many friends. I can't risk losing her. Right. So you like her, but you don't have the nerve. Oh yeah? What would you do? Women have never been one of my priorities. I'm sorry. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> you screwed Alphonse good, didn't you? I don't think he holds it against me this far down the line. He's a new man now, right? Did you enjoy it? Yes. I think it was the happiest day of my life. That bastard deserved it. Maybe it was. Because based on what I've seen, from that day on, it went downhill. Did they find those kids? No. How do I look? Like the invisible man in the movie. <laughs> no one's gonna buy it. Take it easy. Everything's going to work out fine. So, everything's gonna work out fine, huh? You sure it's here? Relax. It's just a little further. Just follow me. This plan is suicidal. We're gonna die. I don't think so. I don't think so. And may I ask why? It's not the first time I've done a job like this. And I never was any good at getting killed. There's a first time for everything, my friend. Milton, if you go on contradicting me, you're not going to get into your role. Don't forget, while we're here, you're supposed to be at my beck and call. While we're here. Hey, you. Where do you think you're going? Hello, friend. 
I've come to speak with Nikolai Ivankov. Can you help me? Now, I'm sorry, pal. The mummy repair center is over on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> well, we tried being polite. Kick him in the balls, honey. It'd be my pleasure, uh, sweetie chops. Dakota. Yeah, my pleasure, Miss Dakota. Listen, friend, I've had to freeze my ass off on guard duty myself. Let me and my man pass, and you can carry on warming yourself up. The other option is for us to warm him up ourselves, Mr. Burke. You have no idea, my friend. Takes the patience of a saint. Yeah. <laughs> Look, pal, without an appointment, you can't come in. I have an appointment in the name of Osmond Burke. You're Burke? Why didn't you say so before? Come on in. supposed to be here. Where's the ship? Looking for someone. We arranged to meet Nikolai Ivankov at berth 42, but it looks like the ship isn't moored here. Has she set sail? It isn't moored? <laughs> Maybe she sunk to the bottom of the ocean. You know that we punish children who behave badly, don't you? <laughs> Yesterday, it was Juliet who behaved badly. Do you remember? Uh-huh. She hit Junior so she would finish ahead of him in the morning race. Do you know what we did to her? Mm -mm. Don't worry. You'll find out soon enough. Which do you prefer? The doll? Or the plush toy. Two days ago, Mickey bit Tom so he could take his food. Do you know what we did with him? Bruno says you killed him. Bruno says many things. We 
Which do you prefer, blonde hair or brown? And today, you tried to escape. Do you know what the difference is? No. Juliet and Mickey hurt their friends so that we would not punish them. You tried to escape, but you did not harm your friends. On the contrary, you tried to help Bruno, putting your own life in danger. Very few children would do that. We are going to punish you. <laughs> but in a different way than Juliet and Mickey. Bruno, on the other hand, did something very similar to them. He betrayed you to avoid being punished. I'm sorry. Which of these two drawings do you like best? 